hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Out of the Park Baseball 22 with the expansion Boston Blazers. It is May 1st and we're not very good, but we're interesting. Uh, and that's, I think, more important. And you'll also notice the lack of a significant uh, name in our starting lineup. Really, a lack of two significant names in our starting lineup. As at the end of last episode, after I finished recording, I decided to take one more dive and see if I could trade Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And I, it wasn't the best deal in the world, uh, but we were able to move on from Vlad, we are still eating like 65% of his contract, but we were able to trade him. So if we look at the major transactions log, you can see we traded Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who's down to two stars now. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., CJ Crone, who's 35 and was in our minor league system. Davian Hickson, a two-star uh, pitcher who may or may not develop. Uh, Ed Bear Perez, which was kind of tough to give up, but my thought process was that his bat is average. It's it's a slightly above average bat. He's got good speed, but he's never going to be good defensively. Since our ballpark is big, I wanted to make sure we had um, uh, had good defensive players, and then we also had to give up Ryan Jeffers. So um, giving up Jeffers was probably the hardest part, but also the part that made me feel the most okay with it, I guess, because we're able to um, shed, you know, 8 million this year, 12 million next year, and 15 and a half after that. So, and we got a reliever in return that, you know, is what it is. But so we, um, so we went from having no money to having $30 million this year, $40 million next year. Our fan interest is down to 95. Our revenue per game is up though. And you can see we'll be taking on 14 million of Vlad this year, and then 17 for the next four years. But that's better than 26. So, um, yeah. So I, you know, let me know what you thought of that deal. Um, yeah, let me know what you thought of the deal. And uh, the other big news, where is it? Um, in just his third professional start, our 2023. First round pick, 21-year-old Christian Little throws a no-hitter. First no-hitter I've had in any of my out-of-the-park 22 playthroughs against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Three walks, six strikeouts, 116 pitches, throws a no-no. So Christian Little. Looking really, and he's looking, he's starting to get, starting to look really, really good. At age 21, he could be an animal by the time he's fully developed. So we're 9 and 17. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're 9 and 17. Uh, we went full youth movement here. Um, we now, uh, Galiz, who was our Rule 5 guy last year, is now our starting catcher. We've got, we called up Manzardo uh, to play first base for uh, Vlad. We got Marte up. We got Arias up. Um, Hauser's batting two. Senzel's, uh, you know, our, Senzel's our only free agent acquisition who's really doing anything. And, I mean, he's been, he's been fine. 836 OPS. Rest of the lineup has been really, really bad. Kowser's been okay, uh, hitting almost 300. Galiz is hitting well. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the offense has been really poor. Pitching has been up and down, as you would expect with a young pitching staff, uh, but some pretty good numbers. I, Jackson's got a 2.92 ERA, struck out 30 in 24 innings. Uh, McCade Brown has been not great. Um, way, obviously, way too many home runs, six home runs in 25 innings, but early, you know, early yet. Juan Then has not been good, which has been a bit of a surprise. I mean, he's given up eight home. We're giving up too many home runs from the looks of it. Yeah, Ben's given up eight home runs. Caleb Gilbert hasn't been particularly good either. He's given up eight home runs in 26 innings. So it's just, it's been too many home runs. So we can cut back on the home runs. We'll be fine. Um, yeah, anything else I want to look at? I don't really think so. Um, you know, if we just quickly take a look at war. So Zell, Kowser, Galise, uh, Beretta, and Marte are the only plus war players uh, we've got some players who are doing really, really badly. Like Kevin Biggio is hitting a buck thirty-eight. Um, you expect a low batting average with a forty contact, but I, you know, if you can hit two thirty, you know that would be fine. So I, I fully expect that by the time the season's over, he'll be hitting two thirty, two forty, and you know, put up 
you know, one and a half, two war, something like that. Uh, Arias, he's a negative war uh, batter, uh, but he's been very good defensively, which is what we wanted out of him. And yeah, that's really it from a, a lineup perspective. Pitching wise, we've got, you know, I, it's been a, a difficult start for Then Brown and Gilbert, but I think long term they're going to be fine. Um, some of our pitchers have, I mean, our bullpen hasn't been terrible. Um, Gilliam as our closer has given up one run in eight innings. Doval's pitched well this year. Pop has pitched really well. Ojeda's pitched really well. Ramirez has pitched really well. Murphy struggled a bit. Uh, Burns has been fine. So yeah, I mean, our bullpen has been quite good. Uh, our starters haven't been great and our lineup has been poor. So, but again, we're interesting. And that's really all that matters. And just a quick glance at our pipeline. Cantero is still in the international complex. Jackson, Little, Brown, Marte are all up. Adam Shoemaker was our first-round pick a year ago. And he looks like he's not that far away from the majors. He'll start this season in double A. Probably go up to triple A by the end of the year, and he could be up next year. Uh, Galiz is already on the big league roster. Carter Jensen is, you know, a year or two away, maybe. Um, he's not great defensively. That catcher ability needs to improve, but he's going to have a really solid bat. So I wouldn't mind going with Galiz and Jensen as our as our catching combination in the future. So Jensen will start in double A. He'll be up before too long. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we got a lot of... Uh, Drew Compton is in triple A. Uh, he's... Actually, is he up? No, he's in AAA, yeah. He's in AAA right now, but he'll likely be called up um, once he proves he can hit in AAA. And he'll probably be our first baseman. So, uh, so yeah, so the plan, it's May. The plan is to get through June and July. So I'm going to sim ahead now through the end of May. Um, and we'll come back with some stats. So hang tight. I'll be back in a minute. All right, we are back. It is Sunday, June 1st, and wouldn't you know it, your Boston Blazers are still seven games out of first place, but one just one game under 500. We had a fantastic month. We were 18 and 11 in May. So let's take a look at the notes. We'll look at the stats, and then we'll move forward. So Gilbert, he dropped, so I think maybe his usefulness is running out, although he had a pretty good month. 3 and 0 with a 375 ERA, so his ratings dropped, but he pitched really well. Uh Arredondo, uh his ratings have dropped too, but he's hitting okay as a backup. Kyle Manzardo. Kyle Manzardo. We called him up after we traded Vlad Jr. and he has done nothing but rake. Look at the numbers through his first month in the majors. 341, 375, 695, a 180 OPS plus. 22 runs knocked in in 26 games. He was a beast. Uh, anything else of interest here? Cantero got better. Still a ways away at age 18, but uh, Ale Batter of the Month, Tristan Cassius, now of the Kansas City Royals in the NL, Juan Soto. Hayden Junger of the Aces wins your AL Pitcher of the Month, NL Pitcher of the Month, Ian Anderson, Rookie of the Month, Mike Wellman, and in the National uh, National League, as expected, Kyle Manzardo. And you can see um, a lot of the players I was concerned about have really turned things around. You can see our pitching staff is uh, quite good now. Fourth and runs against. Our starters have the eighth-best ERA. We have the second-best bullpen in the National League. Our offense is coming along. I talked about Biggio uh, and how bad he was in April. In May, 289, 358, 577, 935 OPS, and all of a sudden he's on pace for 29 home runs, 85 RBIs, a two-win season, just like I said. Uh, Loriano had a really good uh, May as well, 253, 39, 519 with some power, drove in 20 runs. Uh, while playing really, really good right field for us. Senzel struggled with the bat. Our Kowser was okay. Galise continues to hit. And I don't know that he's going to hit 340 forever, but we'll take it as long as we can get it, right? Catcher, he's got good def he's good defensively. He's got some speed. He's going to get on base. Marte's coming along. Um, how's he doing defensively? He's good defensively at second base. 
Um, and he, I believe also, yeah, he had a much better May as well, 248, 333, 376. Uh, much better May than in April, as did Arias, who's up to eight home runs, 25 knocked in, 278, 300, 515 out of Arias. So across the board, and still playing great defensively. Across the board, we were a better team in the month of May than we were in the month of April. And you just look at some of our pitching stats here. I mean, look at some of our ERAs in in uh, in, in in our bullpen. You can see how we're getting it done. I mean, Gilliam two eight nine, Pop two three nine, Ojeda two one zero, Duvall two zero one, Burns one seven eight, um, and our starters. One then has won four straight starts. Um, May four and one with a two ten ERA in five starts. Um, Littles dropped his ERA three and two. Actually, it looks like it went up. Okay, three and two, four eight eight, but still wasn't bad. Struck out thirty in twenty seven innings. That's fine as a rookie. McCade Brown, hard luck. Uh, he's two and six, but has an ERA of three and a half. Yeah, he was one and three with an ERA of two in May. That's that's hard luck right there. Only twenty eight hits in forty innings of work. Um, Isaiah Jackson, uh, he I think had a bit of a down month, right? Yeah, five seven nine ERA. Too many walks, sixteen walks in twenty eight innings. But again, he's young, so you kind of deal with it. So yeah, I mean it was a great month, a great month. Um, we still have fans coming in. I don't know that we're going to make any trades. I think if we were going to deal anything off, it would be one of these, I call them excess just because there's so many of them, but excess bullpen arms. Our bullpen's been so good that we can afford to trade one of them and make, you know, and, and call somebody up from the minors. Um, the question is return. Like, we're not going to re sign Zach Pop when the season's over. So it probably makes sense. Yeah, not for nine and a half million. Probably makes sense to trade someone like him. If you look at our salaries, Pop is up at the end of the year. Apostle wants four point six. I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, so let's see, who are we potentially gonna deal? Ojeda could be gone at the end of the year. For some reason, still nobody wants him, and I don't know that I want to pay him seven. So he might be gone. Low will be gone. Uh, Apostle potentially. Pop. Curtis Taylor. He's in AAA right now. I mean, we could call him up. He's pretty unhappy in AAA, as to be expected. So, yeah, I mean, we've if we move... And Hamilton's in AAA as well, right? Yeah, Ian Hamilton's in AAA as well. So we got a couple of bullpen arms. I mean, we could trade Pop. We could trade Hamilton. We could trade Taylor. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a good year. You know, all things considered, I you know we 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 had a rough year last year, but we are bouncing back. So, uh, yeah, fifty nine and one hundred and three last year, twenty seven and twenty eight so far this season. So we're gonna sim ahead again. We'll get to the beginning of July, and then we'll go day by day in July like we normally do. So, hang tight for July first. All right, we are back for July, and we're thirty eight and forty two. So we were a couple games under five hundred that month. Uh, we did have a bit more of a difficult schedule. I saw we played the Dodgers, we played the Padres, so we were 11 and 14. Uh, puts us 38 and 42. Like we're not in contention for a playoff spot, you know, at all. But um, still an interesting team. We did lose McCade Brown for the year, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, he had pitched much better than his record, so hopefully he comes back healthy next season. Uh, yeah, and you can just sort of see how things are going. Kyle Manzardo is apparently Babe Ruth. Uh, who knew? Uh, 384, 416, 728 slugging, 42 RBIs in 48 games. Um, uh, Jesus Galiz is still hitting. He's up to 358. So a uh, couple of our young offensive players are really, really performing well for us. Really, I mean, all of our young players. Kowser's hitting 275. Um, 19 doubles. I mean, he's not not a lot of home run power, but he's doing okay. Um, Marte is coming along. That averages up to 240. Um, Arias has got 11 home runs. He's on pace for 22 home runs, three win season. Uh, and then our pitching staff continues to be solid. We're seventh in runs against, but a lot of that is skewed from April when we were really, really bad. Ninth best starters ERA, third best bullpen ERA. We brought up Brendan Beck. 
when McCade Brown got hurt and he pitched a five hit shutout in his first start with eleven ground ball outs. Um and he's two and two with a three, one, eight through four start. So yeah, our starting pitching has been really good. And what we'll do is we'll we'll sim we'll we'll do a day at a time here in July, and then when we get to the end of July, that's when we'll kind of do the the deep dive on the stats and prospects and and whatnot. But yeah, overall things are things are looking pretty darn good right now for us. Um, revenue per game is up ten percent, uh, and that's with increased ticket prices. We're bringing more fans in, um, so yeah, things look good. Uh, we got to look at international amateurs now. And there's the guy. Hopefully, he wants to sign with us. Would love to bring in a second baseman with that kind of. Um, I mean, look at the, God, that's like that's like elite, like all time great leadoff hitter. Hopefully, he wants to sign with us. If not, uh, I don't know. Maybe we come back and we take a run at at that pitcher, Morales, or we look at one of these other hitters. Like Danny Veloso isn't bad. So, yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and sim game one here at Milwaukee. Hopefully we have a pretty good month. 5-4 loss in game one. Yeah, that sucks, man. That sucks. All right. So he doesn't want to sign with us. Uh, do we just go after another pitcher? I mean, you can never have too much pitching, right? Um, I think I'm going to go after Veloso. And he looks to be pretty good. He's good defensively, yeah. I don't know that he's a center fielder, but... That's disappointing. I wanted, I wanted Solano. Man, I wanted Solano. Yep, high loyalty, high work ethic. Uh, that's fine. Danny Veloso. Let's offer him four million, and we win. So we went four to three here. We score a run on the bottom of the ninth. Nice. Biggio two for four. He's up to fifteen home runs. Manzardo three more hits. Uh, Little went six. Bullpen. Riley Gilliam had just an absolutely awful month of June. Uh, you can see 12 games, ERA of 12.6, give up 14 runs in 10 innings, raised his ERA from like two and a half to six. So it's nice to see him bounce back there and pick up the win in a scoreless inning. But again, bullpen continues to do well. Um, cool. Let's move on. We got the draft coming up here in a week. We lose Loriano for four to five weeks. That's not ideal. And we lose, which is also not ideal. Uh, we'll call Compton up. And who's going to play right field for us? Mangum is going to play right field for us. And any word on Volano? Nothing yet. Uh, oh, player development. We didn't look at that. Gilliam took a step back. Ojeda took a step back. Little got better. Murphy got better. Burns got better. McCade Brown got better. Even while he's out. Burns up to three and a half stars now as a reliever. He could be a starter very easily. Manzardo, as expected, got better. Galiz got better. Marte got better. Cool. All right. So we're one and two this month. And again, it's not about wins and losses. It's about player development. And we lose Isaiah Jackson for six to seven weeks. So now I'm starting to get a little concerned here as we've now lost two of our young starters to injury. We did win. So let's look at the box score first. So Jackson went three before getting knocked out. Burns, Ojeda, Murphy. Home runs from Apostle and Marte. So we'll just dive back into our... Uh, multiple minor leaguers, and I think we move Burns into the rotation, and we make Taylor a long reliever, and we just run from there. Nothing from Volano yet. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There we go. Veloso. Okay, so let's... Can we just offer him five? So it said he loved our organization and wants to come play for us. So maybe for $5 million he'll sign with us. We'll see. 
All right, game one at Arizona. 8-6 win, so we're 3-2 and two this month. We're down 5 nothing and battled back for the victory. Arias homers, Aaron Dotto hits a pinch hit, two-run homer. Two hits from Senzel and Marte. Gilbert and gives up two earned in two and a thirds, but then the bullpen comes in and does their job. Gillian with another save. So we're 3-2 and two this month. Four and th or three and three now. So we get beat pretty badly there. And we lose again. Oof. All right, so we've lost two in a row. We're three and four now. We get a day off. And did he sign with us yet? We did. Okay, so Danny Veloso signed with us now. Um, so that's good. 17 years old, high loyalty, high work ethic. I mean, he could play center field with these with these ratings. He, a lot of range, not great error, but he can play center field. Uh, so we got three games now against the Braves with the draft coming up. So game one at home versus Atlanta is our third straight loss. Four straight losses. Five straight losses. All right, so now things are starting to go sideways a little bit. As to be expected, right? I mean, we're down two of our top. We're down 40% of our of our, our starting rotation. McCade Brown and Isaiah Jackson are both out. So that's that's anticipated when you go from Brown and Jackson to Beck and Burns. So I, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not going to not going to stress too much about the record this year. I just I want to see um Kowser, Galise, Manzardo, Marte, Arias all improve offensively and then then little eh, really all of our starters can could still, you know, they're all still young enough that they can develop, but um yeah, so that's Kind of where we are, and it's time for the draft, and we do have the second pick in the draft. So, yeah, there are some stud pitchers in this draft. So let's look at the mock draft. They think we're going to take Chris Shoop, and he's good. I'm not going to take him with the number two pick. Wow, there's some good talent in this draft. Wow, 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 wow. So if we look at pitching potential... Zach Dunn is an animal. I mean, you know, ace potential, number one starter. Mitchell's a little bit further away at 18. I probably wouldn't take him with the number one pick. Toomey, probably, I mean, with the control's a little light, and he's only a two-pitch pitcher. So I think if Dunn falls to us, he might be that pick, unless there's... Yeah, there's not really a bat here that screams top overall pick to me. There are a couple good, like Jody Large, I think, is a really good bat. And we need a bat. You know, that's the thing. We need a bat. Like, Jody Large would be our starting center fielder in, like, what, two years? But I don't know that you can pass up on someone like Zach Dunn. Although he is 21 and the stuff in the control. Let's see what happens. If I, I'm actually am now leaning towards Jody Large. So let's see who they take. They took Mitchell. They took the 17 year old. Okay. So they took the 17 year old, which I wouldn't have taken. Uh, you know, I mean, he could end up being great, but still a ways away. So I think, who do they think we should take? They think we should take Dunn. Ceiling of an ace with three plus secondary pitches. My concern with Dunn is that he's 21 years old and his stuff and his control are only 20. So he's a 20 year old who's probably at least three years away. At least. He's got a splitter that's going to be pretty good, a fastball that's going to be pretty good. Curveball that potentially is going to be pretty good. And then I don't know that the changeup and the knuckle curve ever develop. I don't think, I think I go Jody Large. I think we take the bat because we need, I mean, this is our leadoff hitter. You know, this replaces Senzel when his contract is up. And he can play center field. Jody Large is the pick. So let's get on to our next pick and see what's available. Mike Herman, a right fielder, a power bat. Um, meh. I mean, he's okay. Let's go to pitchers. Okay, so we still have a couple of really nice pitchers here, including a couple of 
I don't normally take bullpen arms, but yeah, I still don't think I'm going to take a bullpen arm. Uh, Wilfredo Aguirre, though, I think that's uh, a no-brainer. 21 years old, 61, 57, 51, four potentially plus plus pitches, 95 to 97. Wilfredo Aguirre, come on down. Still more pitching. Yeah, again, change up that probably won't ever develop. Here we have a 21-year-old who's already got maxed out movement. He's from Downers Grove, which is where I'm from. So you know who all who else is from Downers Grove, just for, for those of you who are still with me at this point. Um WWE wrestling great Randy Macho Man Savage is from Downers Grove, Illinois. I don't know if you guys were aware of that, but uh, there's there's a bit of trivia for you today. Um, Franklin Hernandez can hit, but I think we're going to go with that pitcher. We're going to go with Ethan Patera. Ugh, I mean, he's the kind of the ultimate low ceiling High floor guy. High leader, high loyalty, high intelligence, low greed. Yeah, he's only 21, though. Yeah, I think Ethan Patera is a good pick. Do we want to take Joe Kennedy? No, I don't really. Let's go back to batters. Who do they think we should take? They think we should take a pitcher. I don't want to take him. We're going to take Hernandez. I like that. I mean, he's 22, so I don't know that he's ever truly going to develop. But if he ends up with a 62 contact, 29 home run, 49 discipline, and 79 avoid K, that's a good contact. Ooh, Humberto Gomez. Actually, we're going to take Humberto Gomez. And then we'll take Hernandez if he's there with the next pick. And he's not. Okay. Okay. Enrique Farquarson. Farquarson. That's a name. Let's look at all players. We got any pitchers in here? Mike Holloway. 21 years old. I mean, he's he could play, what, play third base or a corner outfield spot with those ratings or potentially center field. Yeah, we'll take Mike Holloway. Make him a two-way player and stick him in the outfield. Um, let's look at fielding ratings and find ourselves a catcher. I just want one of these guys to have like a tiny bit of hitting ability. Sal, Sal Abara. It's, it, with a name like Sal, he's got to be from New York, right? I mean, he's got to be. So Sal Ibarra, come on down. And now let's look at individual pinch, pitch, pitch potential. Let's see if there's anybody here. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Pristajko, Tyler Pristajko. I am recording, yes. Yes, all right. Uh, Nazier Mule, extreme fly ball pitcher, 12 movement. That's not going to get it done. Well, what's this guy? Oh, he's a shortstop. Billy Hanahan, I like him. He's good, really good defensively. That's not my pick. Now it's my pick. Yeah, we'll take Hanahan and, and he's, no, he's not really good defensively. I take that back. Not a lot of great options here. Usually you can find a couple of players that maybe are undervalued for some reason. No. Nope. Anybody with a knuckleball? We do have a knuckle. Jose Salazar. He's a outfielder. He has a knuckleball. Uh, all right, let's go back to batting potential. Any 
Gabe McCray. Yeah, at this point in the draft, sure, Gabe McCray. Uh, who's got the best eye? Joe Jacobs. Tony Espinoza. He's a pretty good hitting catcher. I mean, well, I guess he's good power potential, I should say. Um, and the rest. Jordan Viars. I mean, he's pretty well developed, so we'll take him, get some depth in the system. And I think that's going to call it. It's going to do it for this draft. Um Auto complete the draft. I really like the top of our draft. The first couple of picks, I'm really, really happy with. Um, I can't wait to get large out there. Uh, he's 22. Uh, he'll probably start in A ball. He'll be up probably by the end of next season. Really like Wilfredo Aguirre, uh, another 21 year old. He'll probably start in A ball. He's not that far off either. Patera is pretty developed for a 21-year-old. Again, a high floor, low ceiling type, but you need players like that. Humberto Gomez, I like. Again, a, a good potential center field option. Holloway, we're going to make a two-way player. Uh, he looked like he could play center field with his defensive ratings. Uh, the range is a little light, but you know maybe we can make him a... You know, shortstop, he's not really a shortstop with that range. If we're going to play him on the infield, he's going to be a third baseman. So maybe we can make him a third baseman slash center fielder. You don't see many of those. All right, so we have completed the draft. And we've lost five in a row. And, um, yeah, we're dealing with a couple of injuries. We get some people back in a few weeks, which is nice. Uh, we won't, we, Brown is done for the year, but we get Loriano back in a few weeks, Jackson back in a few weeks. So what do we want to try to do here? I mean, I don't want anybody on the trade block because they're all, you know, expiring contracts. Speaking of expiring contracts, what are we going to have potentially coming up next year. So we have a Carlos Gonzalez um, normal uh, injury, even though he's dealing with a torn UCL now. I mean, if he becomes available and they don't ask for, I mean, we may even be able to make a run at him if they, if they, if they, if we require compensation, I don't mind giving up a third round pick for someone like this, who's just been, well, I guess he hasn't been great, but last year he was really good and he was off to an amazing start this year. Uh, Dylan Carlson is somebody I had my eye on uh, with the Cardinals. Uh, great outfielder, great bat, great speed. Um, so we're going to lose Pop. So we, we should probably look to move him. Pablo Lopez is a potential free agent. We'll look maybe to pick him up as well. I don't know. I don't think uh, he'll be do a qualifying offer. I could be wrong. Um, but offensively, you know, maybe Andrew Vaughn is an option if he's not, if they're not asking for a lot, uh, Trey Turner. So there are some options offensively next season that I'm really excited about, but I think right now the option is the, the, the let's see what we can get for some of these players that we know we aren't going to bring back and, um, whose contracts expire. So prospects for Zach Pop. I mean, there are some names on here, so I wonder what it would look like if we went to... Okay, you get a couple of 23-year-olds from the Padre. No, neither of them are any good, though. He's good defensively. So what if we go to regulars? And I, I guess I should look for pitchers, too. I have it set on all batters, so we'll switch to that in a minute. And he's a good backup middle infielder, which I don't really need. Another shortstop. Everybody wants to give me shortstops. Izzy Wilson. No. Well, that's kind of poo. Brian Reynolds is crashed and burned here over the last couple of years. The Cardinals have some interest in him. I mean, they're offering a bunch of players. Anybody any good? Not really. 
Tampa Tampa Bay wants to give us Austin Meadows for him. As I shift in my seat to think about this, I think we take Drew Waters instead. Can we get Waters and Sabato? They really want him. I mean, I would love to get Austin Meadows, but I've been burned by big contract before, so I'm a little bit hesitant. So let's Waters and Sabato. And if we give you Apostle. You want Matthew Champion? You can have Matthew Champion. Yeah, I mean, I think no-brainer, right? So we give up Zach Pop, who has been really good for us. Uh, but still, only 0.2 war. We're not going to resign him. We give up Shirt and Apostle, whose ARB number was up to like 4.5 million next year. He's not hitting this year. And Matthew Champion, who's a pitcher that we turned into a third baseman. And in return, we get Drew Waters, who can't really play center field. He's more of a right fielder, but that's fine. Uh, and we get Aaron Sabato, who is a power hitting corner infielder that would replace Apostle for. Um, no money for basically, you know, 5% of what Apostle was making. So, yeah, let's do it. All right, so now we have to call up a pitcher. And we need to... So, Berate is our backup. Mangum's really good. Senzel. So, we've got... Uh, designated for assignments. So we'll call up Waters. And then we'll send Compton down, and we will call up Sabato. And now we have to sort of reset our lineup here a little bit, but that's fine. Get Magnum out of there. Get Waters in there. Does he have splits? He's not really. I mean, he's better against righties, but uh, Sabato will be the backup there. And he will be the backup there. I Alcantara... Uh, yeah, I, he'll be gone probably prior to this season. So we've got two backup outfielders now that are really, really good, and we don't really need two backup outfielders that are really, really good. Um, Bereda, um, oh man, he's like elite, F uh, but so is Mangum. Mangum isn't quite as good. Does anybody want Jake Mangum? I like that trade with Tampa. Very, very happy with that. Because we move on from two players that we weren't going to, um, that we weren't going to resign and get two players that have some actual value. All right, so nobody really wants Mangum. And that's fine, because what's going to, I mean, we're going to get Loriano back in three weeks, and then we're going to have to send one of those players down. Um, is there anybody else we want to look to move? No one's going to take low, so we're just going to have to eat this until the end of the year. I still don't think anybody wants Ojeda. I mean, we'll look. This is the way it's been for two years now. Oh, wow. Okay, now people want him. For the first time ever, people want Jose Ojeda. And nobody any good, no one that I would really want to give him up for. But it's good to know that people want him now. Uh, we got Biggio, who we're not going to trade. He's been... I'm really happy with what we're getting out of Kevin Biggio. Uh, on pace for 27 and, one, and 77. Uh, almost an 800 OPS. I'll, I'll take it. Uh, Sinzel hasn't been great. Um... But again, it's it's a negligible contract. I mean, none of these guys are making a ton of money, so it's not like we're we're shedding salary for the sake of set for the sake of shedding salary. But you know, are there players that we just that we know we don't need going forward? I guess is what it comes down to. 
Urena is going to be gone next year. Contreras will be gone next year. Paredes will be gone next year. Yeah, I don't know that there's really anything else here that I want to... We'll sim ahead a week, and we'll kind of see where we stand at that point. So let's see how this newfound lineup does with uh, Drew Waters out there. First game at Washington. It's another loss. We've lost six in a row now. Seven in a row. We finally win one, six to two. Marte, a couple of hits. Bereda has three hits. Beck gets the win. Let's get to here. Let's get to the San Francisco game, and then we'll take a look. And I got to look and see if my um, players have signed. So we lose again. Ugh. Which is fine. Again, I can't, like, I don't want to sit here and, and act like, you know, I expected us to be a playoff team because I didn't, but... So we will disable his promotion. And we're going to start the 23-year-old in A-ball. Uh, Gabe McCray. He's fine where he is. Are we still waiting for everybody? Yeah, Lar. Yeah, we're still waiting for everyone. All right. Yeah, I wasn't expecting... I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say I was expecting us to compete because I wasn't. Um, but you know, when you get to the end of June and you're a 500 team, you start to think, oh, maybe, you know, we've sort of turned the corner here, but a two and what is that? Two and 10 stretch quickly saps that out of you. Sinzel, three hits, three RBIs. Biggio, three hits. Galiz has two hits. Arias has two hits. Little gets the win, improves to seven and eight. You get anybody else to sign with us? Yeah, Large, Patera, and Miranda. Okay. So Large is not going to start in rookie ball. He's going to start in high A ball, and we are going to disable his promotion. Patera is going to start in A ball. We are going to disable his promotion. And Miranda. He was, what, our fifth round? Ninth round pick. Okay, so we're still waiting on our second round pick. Yeah, Aguirre and Holloway we're still waiting on. So, yeah, you know, you want to see, again, the wins and losses aren't as important. You want to see improvement from your squad and... Yeah, July has been rough. July has been rough. We are 5 and 14 in July. Uh, starters have sort of imploded. Um, but again, we're down Jackson and Brown, who are two of our best starters. Uh, Waters, since coming over, hasn't really hit yet. Um, anybody else we want to potentially move? Maybe Gilliam? He's 28. Anybody interested in O'Reilly Gilliam? All right, we're back. Um, so Gilliam looks like he can fetch essentially his clone, which doesn't really interest me. Um, and there's nothing here that really stands out to me as worth moving on from him. Oh, excuse me. Huh. Is there anybody else? So... I'm happy with Biggio we, as we don't really have a third base reply. Oh, I guess we got Compton who could potentially slide in. I, I don't think – I think he's probably has more value to us than he does to anybody else. Let's just see. And there's some names. Okay, well, I take that back. So there is some, some interest in Kevin Biggio. I could move um, – Compton in at third base and well I guess before we start thinking about that let's see if there's anything here that really interests us no I would prefer a bat Fernando Romero no Hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, there's nothing. I will just hold on to Biggio. I don't need I don't need to move him. Um Sabato Martin. No, 
None of these guys. We're going to move Maldonado. No. Little Jackson, Kowser. Fraley's gone after this year. Mangum's going to want a million, which isn't unreasonable, but... Arb numbers one three. Does anybody want Bereta? Because I mean, I'd be fine with Mangum as my as my fourth outfielder. I mean, they really want to give me Nick Mears. And if I took Nick Mears from you, yeah, Met is how I feel about it as well. Um, oops. Yeah, none of these guys are particularly appealing. All right, I think we are done with moves. We made the one trade bringing in Drew Waters and um, Sabato. And I think we will just run with that. Yep. So let's sim through the end of the month. We'll take a look at the stats. We'll call it an episode. And the next episode will likely be off-season as I'll sim through the next two months offline since we continue to be terrible as we lose again. We lose again. What are we now? 5-17? and 17? Yeah, 5-17 and 17 this month. That's really disappointing. We had gotten off to such a good start. We finally win an 8-7 victory. We have to come from behind to do it. We get four RBIs from Arias, three from Marte. And those are the things I'm looking for, right? Those are the things I'm looking for because it shows growth out of our young players. And that's that's really what I'm concerned about. Manzardo's still hitting. Galiz's average is down a bit, but he's still hitting. Uh, Kowser's not having a great year. That average has really started to slip. The OPS plus down to 73. Let's get to the end of the month. Can we win two games in a row? We can. We finally win two games in a row for the first time in nearly a month. This one in, over in overtime. In extra innings, Arias hits another home run. We get seven and two-thirds solid innings out of Burns. Can we win three in a row? Like an actual winning streak? No, that's too much to ask. All right, so the White Sox want to send us Sonny Gray. Old friend Sonny Gray, and they want Jack Jass yet. No, you can't have him. All right. Uh, schedule. Well, let's finish off this month, hopefully, with... We lose again. Fenn is out. So now we're down 60% of our starting, uh, starting rotation. <sighs> Who gets called up? We're, I mean, I thought we had depth in our minor league systems. It turns out we don't, uh, at least in terms of pitching. And it turns out we don't. So who's going to move into the rotation? Uh, hell if I know. Murphy? Sure. Oof. Hey, a 3 nothing victory. Marte, three hits, up to 250. Manzardo hits his 15th home run of the year. Little goes seven and a third shutout. Yeah, he's going to be really good. He's going to be really good. Game two against Miami. So a little bit better, three and two in our last five. And we lose again. And let's see what happens in the final game of the month, right up against the trade deadline. Another loss. So that was just an absolute cluster F of a month for us. No other way to put it. That was a disaster. Peter Hoiback is our number two pick last year. He looks a little bit better. Reinhard Hauser was a scouting discovery, right? Okay, he's coming along nicely. 
Coloran. Viers was our was a pick this year. A lot of prospects getting better. Uh, rookie of the month in the National League. I was hoping it would be Manzardo. It's not. It's Justin Yurchak. Holy crap. Where did he come from? Drafted by the White Sox in the 12th round back in 2017. Traded for Manny Banuelos. Wow. All right, so it's August 1st. We're 46 and 63. Uh, we went 8 and 21 in July. And yeah. So we have, where are we from a record perspective? We're 46 and 63. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're like the sixth worst record in baseball right now. So still a top 10 pick, uh, which we'll be looking at probably next year. That'll be our, what, our third straight top 10 pick. And let's, I guess let's just take a look at our stats. Yeah, so Little's been really good. Uh, two Warriors on pace for three, uh, eight and eight. Uh, 370 RA, FIP's a little high, but he's been fine. Murphy's in the rotation for now, but that won't last very long. Hate has been good. Gilbert's been meh. Beck's been meh. Burns has been meh. Again, we're down 60% of our starting rotation, so it's to be expected. Gilliam has actually ended up having a really bad year. Uh, he got off to a really hot start, but he's been really, really bad lately. So, yeah, our team, I mean, our pitching staff, we had the fifth best starter and the second best bullpen ERA, and that's just gone the wrong direction. But again, no McCade Brown, no one then who's back in a week, no Isaiah Jackson who's back in two weeks. So we get a couple of these guys back, which will hopefully help us over the last couple of months. But losing Brown kind of stinks, but it is what it is. So, um yeah, that's where we are from a pitching perspective, lineup-wise. Manzardo leads us in war in only 76 games, 2.6 war. Uh, Galiz, 2.5 war. Arias, 2.4. Most of Waters' war has come with, well, all of it came with Tampa. Hasn't hit with us yet, but I think he'll be okay. Marte, Biggio, Senzel, and Kowser is a negative war player. A negative war player. He's bad offensively and bad defensively. So Manzardo on pace for three, almost four wins in his rookie year. Uh, I don't know that he's, I mean, he's never going to get any better than this from a ratings perspective, but maybe there will be a statistical, you know, maybe he'll get a bump from just having a great year offensively. Galiz um, hitting really well. The average is down a bit. He was up at 360 or whatever, but you get a catcher that hits you know, puts up an 803 OPS, 116 OPS plus, you will take it. Arias has been incredibly valuable because of his power and his glove. He's on pace for 27 home runs, and he's been uh, just fantastic defensively. Marte, similarly, uh, up to two and a half war, uh, slightly below average offensively and above average defensively. So our middle infield uh, has been pretty solid from a defensive perspective. Uh, Biggio at 231, um, still on pace for about a war and a half. Uh, he's been below average at third. I'd prefer him in a kind of super utility type role, but, you know, this is what we get right now. Senzel has been okay, striking out a crap ton. OPS plus a little below average. He's probably he's a right fielder playing in center field, so we got a couple players that are sort of out of position, and you can see, based on his zone rating and his efficiency, that he's not getting it done. Sabato hasn't really played much for us. Aaron Dondo is providing some pop uh, as a backup catcher, which is great, and his defense is passable, so I think we're fine there. Bereda is getting maybe more playing time than I would like with that 596 OPS plus, but he's really, really good defensively no matter where we play him. Uh, Mangum, better offensively, uh, not quite as good defensively as Bereda. And we talked about Kowser and Alcantara is gone at the end of the year. So um, we have no draftees left to sign. Let's look at our pipeline. 
uh, Cantero still. You know, he'll be in the international complex until next year. Jackson Little, Shoemaker. How's he doing? Five and six, four, one, eight ERA in double A. Um, I think we leave him there for the year, and then he'll start next year in triple A. Brown, Marte, Galiz, Jensen, House Carter, Jensen doing the bats coming along. Catcher ability's coming along too, actually. So he'll finish the season in double A. I'm excited about Jensen. Uh, Hauser, we talked about. Medeiros, we talked a little bit about. Um, 16th round pick uh, in double A right now. He's 24, so he's probably going to have to get called up relative. In fact, you know what? Let's call him up to triple A right now. He's old enough that he needs to be in triple A, I think. Um, Tamar Johnson is not coming along as I would have liked, although he's hitting okay, all things considered. Um, it's just good. It's slow going with him. There just weren't a lot of options. So it's slow going with him, but, you know, he still has some time um, before we consider him a complete bust. Yeah, and that's really about it, guys. So August 1st, we're 46 and 63. So I'm going to sim ahead to the end of the regular season. And next episode will be uh, another offseason. Uh, but another offseason, this time with some real hope as we have sort of integrated some of our young players into our lineup. And now we can start to add some veterans around them. So if you've watched this to the end, guys, I would appreciate it if you dropped the video a like. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, we're still, we're, we're inching oh so close to 300 subscribers. I go, I, I gain three and I lose one or I gain two and I lose two. It's I've been bouncing between 290 and 295 for about a month now. So I'd love to see that push over 300 just for my own vanity, I guess. But uh, at any rate, guys, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the support. We'll talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye.